כמה זמן זה ריטה פרשצ'בואו So uh, the stage is yours and I'm really thankful for you for your wish uh, to be with us this morning early morning in New York uh, on Shabbat please Shabbat Shalom everyone thank you Rita I really appreciate this opportunity and very especially your work uh, building our bridge between our uh, headquarters in Jerusalem in Israel and the work on the field leaded by our rabbis and like persons and uh, professional staff around the three countries that uh, we used to say the FSU, the former Soviet Union, but really we recognize and appreciate that we have the, the three countries working together, Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine. And uh, this morning of Shabbat, uh, the opportunity, also the privilege we, to share with uh, all of you in this uh, excited uh, conference uh, with the rabbi scholar teachers, uh, how we can uh, dive deeper in our roots, in our texts, in our tradition, To, to become really faithful to our tradition in continuity and also in responsibility to keep our values, to recreate our vision, but to be committed to study, to take the time to learn together and to receive it from our text and especially from our Torah, a cosmovision, an approach to address the purpose and the meaning of our life from a Jewish perspective, but with a wider approach to open our mind and to be more inclusive and also more relevant to the context also to the new generations and for our families and community and our countries. This morning we read, we learn from the Torah. Parashat Toldot. Katuva Torah, it's teaches on the Torah that Ele Toldot Itzhak Ben Abraham Abraham Olide Ditzchak. Here we share the Toldot, the stories, the generations from father to the son, from Abraham to Ditzchak. And here the Torah presents us the first chain of continuity and tradition for our people and for our families. It's so important to come back to this dialogue between father and sons, father and daughter. Because the Talmud teaches that one of us is blessed if he best teacher, he best rabbi are his father and mother. And here is the root of the identity is the root of, of the continuity and also of the Talmud Torah process. Because we said that the most important Torah that is equivalent to everyone and all of them together is Talmud Torah, Keneget Kulam. But the study of the Torah is equivalent to all the mitzvot because through the study of the Torah, we arrive to fulfill 
למצוות. אלה תולדות, they are these stories. And for us, these stories teach us how important is to build up a Jewish family. And it's not so clear that if we born in a Jewish family, we receive Jewish content and we receive the Jewish values. Because we know it very well. We don't say that the Jewish identity and the Jewish tradition, it's a biological approach. It's not the blood. It's not only because we're born from a Jewish mother, according to the traditional Allahic approach, or a father, according to a liberal approach. If we born Jewish, we need to become, all of us, Jewish by choice. We need to choose. And to choose, not because we born Jewish, because we fulfill every day, in every place, every time. A choice. How the Jewish values, how our Jewish institutions, how our Jewish st st uh, stories drive us to perform to develop meaning, to seek the purpose of our everyday life. And here to choose, we need to learn. We need to know. And nobody can love his own tradition if we don't invest the time, the experience, the relevant experience to know and to learn about our tradition. It's about this parasha. The Torah commands us something that is for us very, very important is to tell stories. Maybe this is the purpose that Hashem gave us the Torah, the Yad Moshe through Moses in the Sinai. Because it's not only the law there are not only the mitzvot, it's not only a theological message that we receive every time that we call ourselves to read, to teach, to learn, and to fulfill the message of the Torah. There is a very, very important practice in our Jewish identity, and is telling stories. We are every week telling stories. Every Parashat Shabua is a story. And here we have the connection between the action, telling stories, and the Jewish identity of our families. We are sharing stories about our people, the people of Israel. But the connection between our existential approach and the history of the Jewish people. It's our family. We are telling stories about families. From the first families from our ancestors, and here we are learning about the first one, the family of Abraham that will lead, that bring at its heart. And then we will continue. Abraham, Sarah, Yitzchak, Rivka, Yaakov, Achel, Leah. And we pray every day in our Amidah, coming back to these first stories, first family, only to use them like a paradigm 
like a mirror to learn about ourselves, about our stories, our families. And in every one of these stories and in every one of these families, we can sow our own family. The good things and the not so good things. The success of these families that they achieve, dreams and project ambitions, God commandments, but also the frustration, how they fail, some of the contradictions. Here we will learn in this parasha, like the face, first story of brotherhood in Karin Bell. Now we have another one, another problem between Esav and Jacob. But this kind of thing tell us that we are not reading in the Torah something that comes from the past. This is something that we tell about the past, but teach us about the present. Because in every, every family, we have new stories about the same story. The parasha, this time, this opportunity to meet with the text, to dive in the text, and not only to read and to teach and to learn and to share the pshat, the literal approach. Our commitment and our commandments, our mitzvot, is to face the text open mind and also in a proactive way to extract to discover, to build up new meanings, new interpretations. And this is one of the key issues of the reform progressive movement. We are not an easy version. We are not a light approach. We respect the Torah, the mitzvot, the commitment to be faithful to the tradition. But also we feel that this is the ongoing process from the very beginning. For the first call, when God called Abraham, it's not only to have a discussion about what God said Abraham, for, to Abraham. It's also important what's happened inside Abraham because every one of us must be Abraham. Hearing the call of God, telling us, Lech Lecha, go out, make your way. And also it's clear for us that it's not only this first trip from Abraham, from Ur to Canaan, from the diaspora to Israel in our modern times. It's not only the meaning of Aliyah because we are Reform and Zionist. It's the way in every personal project, what means for every one of us, the promised land. It's clear that in the collective memory of the people of Israel, the promised line is Israel, the Dinat Israel. But also the promised land is every place that we build a sacred place, a meaningful life, that we discover the revelation of God in the everyday little miracles that we need to discover, and also our commitment for Tikkun Olam, to repair the world. It's clear for us that Tikkun Olam, how we fix and repair our people, 
needs Israel in the center. But also it's clear for us that the vision of the prophet of Israel call us to fix, fix and repair every community, every society in every country. And you are partners of that. You are struggling, you are working. You have in the FSU a very rich, strong, powerful story to tell us every time. This is your family. You are telling us through our teachers and rabbis and leaders every day, every time, what means for us to be Jewish, to become community builders, to pursue the justice and the freedom, not only of the Jewish people, of everyone, how you fail towards the human rights, the peace and the well-being of the society. The same way that we read from the Torah, from Abraham, from Yitzhak, and now that this parasha bones also, not only Yitzhak, also Yaakov, how this family was the milestone of the monotheism and the Jewish tradition that we offer to all the world. It's the same way that in the FSU, each of our families start to be together around more than 30 years of the initiative of the reform movement to be present, to support, to build together, to invite most of your families to make Aliyah, to come to Israel and to build communities in Israel from Russian speakers and to bring the FSU culture to our identity in the liberal and progressive movement around the world. But this is the way that we are building community because a community is an extended family. And for us, it's so important that in difficult times, when you need us, not only the World Union, every one of us around the world, because this is our work. Our work is to connect, to build a network, to offer us telling the story of one family, bigger, stronger, of the Jewish progressive community around the world. And it's for me so relevant and important to share the leading place that the FSU with your leadership, with your work in the three countries, in Russia, in Belarus, and in Ukraine, how you can empower, enrich, and offer us this story, Toldot, of the FSU progressive Jewish people that offer in different languages, countries, and context, the richness and the power to belong to the same people that in the Torah today, this Shabbat, in this conference, with all of you, we learn, Toldot, our story. We are not only reading about what's happened, we are building together the future that we want to share and to build together. Kenya Ratzon, Yanahem, Shabbat Shalom She, that we have to share a Shabbat 
of Torah, Mitzvot, family, and extended community. Thank you very much, Rabbi Bergman. Thank you. Um, it's really a feeling of uh, importance of family that is influenced all of us and uh, uh, strengthening all of us uh, in this not very easy period of time. Um, if you can share with us your vision about the uh, future of Reform Judaism, not only for FSU, but maybe some uh, words about FSU, but in general, as a president of World Union for Progressive Judaism, where you can see us in the next 10 years all over the world. Thank you, Rita. I, I think that it's, this question is a very relevant one, but also the answer must be a collective answer. I really believe that we need to build up the answer. I think that nobody else, you on the field, needs to guide us what will be our future and what kind of partnership we need. It's clear for the World Union and for me personally, as the new president, to sustain the commitment that for us is historical and also part of our future. How important is for us the FSU process that started before more than 30 years? We need to be clear about how we honor our past and we remember every move, every step, every dream that became a project, how we realize the impact to a lot of Jewish families that the reform movement offer in the FSU. From it's clear, the vision of Rabbi Dick Hirsch and the importance, so sorry, I remember what I was a student at the HUC at the Israeli rabbinic program in Jerusalem, the powerful vision when all this amazing story of hope, dreams, freedom, and Jewish vision bring up the reform movement to be involved. I also remember the blessed memory of Bella, Dick Hirsch's wife, that connect Dick family with the FSU, the Warunian with the FSU, and so relevant key leaders of our movement, like Rabbi Yoel Oseram, not only my teacher and my rabbi, also my friend. The hard work to be with all of you working what we achieve, and we need to not only give recognition, we need to honor our past with our local rabbis in the FSU. On the other hand, we need to face a future. Like Rita said, we, we are in the middle of a crisis, but that means that is the first time that we have a crisis. This is also part of our identity. Not only to face and to address the challenge of a crisis, is to connect ourselves with one of the more important component of our Jewish identity that is not to survive, is to be resilient. And now we need to prove our resilience. In our future, my vision is how we can support in our future, honoring our past, to build up new models, new approaches, new scenarios, to give the opportunity to the three countries that also we need to assume that the former Soviet Union don't exist anymore. There are not more Soviet Union, but we can to our future, to the next 30 years, all the time talking about the former. We need to talk to the future not the former Soviet Union. We need also to address to the 
clear difference in context in every of the three countries that now we are active and we need to continue to be more active and to build more and to offer more and also to involve the local leadership to be so sustainable. Here, we need to raise the question that it's not only for me to give an answer and also I need to respect your local leadership. You know exactly what's happened on the field, on the ground, and you, better than anyone, can show us the right way. What are the challenges in Russia? What are there in Ukraine? What is the question that we need to answer in Belarus? I want to share with all of you the new question, not to give any answer without a round table, a collaborative way, and from the concrete problems that we have, that everyone has right now in this global crisis, I really confident that we'll be creative, flexible, resilient to face this challenging time with creative ways and also with the commitment that we are not afraid to change, but we are really convinced that the value of our contribution to the Jewish world for us in FSU is part of our common future. Thank you very much. And uh, I see that we have an, one question now. Yeah. Rabbi Duhovny, um, he wrote that our future is based on 3B, believe, behave, belong. What do you think about, about those 3B? Agree, 100%. <laughs> I really agree. I think that it's a very good uh, way to, to summarize. Maybe we can use uh, Rabbi Dukovne uh, input from the 3B and to start to talk about what really are our beliefs and how we want to build and to belong. I think that's so important. This is a very creative way to start this ongoing process. And uh, for me, it's clear, I, I don't, we, we share it in, in, in different uh, opportunities with one of two of our meetings with the, the, the local rabbis and also with the, our staff members and through, through your leadership, Rita, that uh, the World Union is not more the paradigm of an umbrella. Uh, we need to build another model. I really believe in, in, in connections and platforms and networking and like in a net, no? every, every, every one of us have a very important role. That is not that we belong to an um, umbrella federation system that someone in some place, especially in Jerusalem, make decisions. I really believe that we need to sit together and we need to build up and to offer. And the leadership of the FSU must come from the field, from the FSU. And also here we have some challenges. I, I don't want to give any answer because it's, it's not really for me. It's, it's not my place. Maybe my place is to raise questions, not to give answer. But I am open also to, 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 to share some of my ideas, but it's ideas. It's not the direction, the final decision of the institution because and also not, not, not the, one of the way to respect the local leadership and the unique value of each of the three countries is not to impose and not to decide nothing without a dialogue on, with the field. But the first move is to say that we need to broke out the status quo. It's clear, but it's not a decision from the World Union and also it's not a decision from the field because one day you come up and say, okay, we want to change. 
No, it, it's natural to not to the Jewish people, to human beings. We don't want to change spontaneously. We must change when the context and the facts of the field oblige us to change. And now the corona crisis, and now all the changes in the world that also we don't know exactly the impact of this crisis. We are just in the middle of the crisis and every one of us knows very well how, they change, how our life changed the last year and how long will be until we can imagine how will be the world after the corona. We are waiting right now from the vaccine. And will we take six months, seven months between come out the vaccine and all the people receive it? And business can't, business can't come back as usual. We will need to think that we will have new business a new life because sociological, economical, political impacts of this crisis are coming. And then we need to be flexible and open to process these new scenarios, but to be together and to say, okay, what are our opportunities? And there are, at least I learned this the last month, there are two things that we can do. One of them is we will continue as always we need only to wait that the crisis come over and then when we come back to the same thing that we done before, this is maybe a very uh, authentic wish we want, but we can. And the other hand, that someone from outside, we come with a program, with a plan, with a direction to say, this is the thing that we need to do. The, the two things are illusions, but we are people not from illusions. We are people of hope. And the difference between illusion and hope is the hard work that we must do. It's very hard to translate from a vision, from a dream to a concrete project that you can sustain in reality. Because papers, PowerPoints, oral tradition, talking about the future is really excited and easy. <laughs> but building on the field, on the ground, and transform the reality is a very hard work that needs the commitment to do it every day. Every day is a very small step to achieve this vision. And we are ready to work together. Like also we, we read in the Torah, no? the al Hem Yahdaf. We need to walk together. I don't know what is exactly the direction. I have some ideas about the north, but I don't know what is really our uh, route. But we are partners and we are family. And I think that in the future we will work together to face this challenging time that is challenge. But it's not uh, uh, really uh, impossible. In the other hand, I also want to share with all of you that will we start to work very uh, systematically about the FSU future uh, projects? We also receive some inputs, uh, Rita, that we share with all of our rabbis and leadership. What are the new ideas about the strategic planning? Because we need to face it. It's not the same that we dream before one year, two years, but it's needed to build up a strategic planning. We can wait. We can wait to the reality that show us what's new. We need to, in advance, to start to think and to share with all of our partners. And I raise here right now, maybe in the conference, you can deal with that. For my humble position, here we have three countries. If we have three countries, we need three strategic plans. We don't need one. And then I, I suppose that we can continue to call all this area, this department, FSU, but the programs needs to respect the uniqueness of each of these countries and also to 
rethink the relationship between the three countries, between three of them, that means between all of you, and also between you and Europe, you and Israel, you and the US, and this is the work of the World Union, is to build up a new map where you want to be, not to listen what we want to do, where you want to be, what you want to do, and how we can be partners. Thank you very much. I agree with you that we have a lot of similar things between these three countries, but today in our real life, we have also a lot of difference and we need to take those difference to our intention and really to work with them and to understand where we are going with each one of the regions that have some very unique things and the ideas they have. Yes. Uh, one more question, and maybe even not a question, but people want to know your personal story, where your roots are coming from, and uh, actually, what is your personal story as a, a human being and a professional as a rabbi? Yes, this is part of my tall dot. My tall dot that means that my story, I born in Argentina, in Buenos Aires. My grandparents come to Argentina like immigrants. Also my father and my mother are Argentinian. My grandparents come from a lodge from Poland. On the both sides, also from my mom and my dad. They arrived in Argentina in 1927, before the war. They are the only few that uh, succeed to left Poland before the war. The rest of the family was killed by the Nazis in Auschwitz. Uh, I was uh, born in, in Argentina, I live in Argentina. My first uh, educational uh, community program that I was a student, first in a primary school that I learned Yiddish and was a secular Zionist school. Then I continue my studies at the high school at Ort. It's funny because uh, Ort, that as you know, is a very strong network around the world, also include Israel and I suppose, I don't know if Russia, they have, but yes, starting the Russia. The Soviet Union also have the Ort schools and we are yes. good partners with them. Yes. Uh, and this is the, the, the only thing that I learned in my uh, young life uh, about Russian, the, the, the name of Ort, Obshevsko Rastastraniania Struda, that was uh, a technical school. I fin if finished my degree in, in the high school like uh, a chemical technician. Then I continued in the University of Buenos Aires. I received my first and second degree in pharmacist and biochemistry. I work in the industry in Argentina, but in parallel, I make all my non-formal educational career, like a young uh, Madrid leader in the reform movement in Argentina, in uh, Buenos Aires. And in some time I get married with Gabriela. Gabriela, uh, my wife, he, her family, one part comes from Poland, but the other part comes from uh, from Russia to Argentina. In the early uh, before my grandparents, from the early uh, nineteen, uh, we have our first child born in Argentina, 
Maya, uh, that uh, we need to make a decision because I have the tension between my profession and my vocation. And then I start to study in Argentina in the seminary or rabbinical Latinoamericana, that is the local seminary for training rabbis, that is uh, from the conservative movement. And I received the opportunity to get a very important scholarship from Amitei Yerushalayim, from the Jewish Agency and the Hebrew University. And I have the, in this time two opportunities to move to the States, to Cincinnati, to study at the HUC in the US, or to take this scholarship to study at the Hebrew University uh, and to continue my rabbinical studies in Israel. We decided to move to Israel in 1991, in the same time that the Gulf War starts in the Middle East. We moved from Argentina to, to Jerusalem. I left my professional uh, first uh, career pharmacist and biochemistry and we moved to Jerusalem there I we spent four years I studied at the JTS at the conservative movement and I finished there and in May in Jewish studies and received my uh, first rabbinical ordination in 1992 from the seminary rabbinical from the conservative one continue my study in the Hebrew University I I finished there my second MA degree in, in Jewish education. And if I fulfilled my program at the Israeli rabbinic program in the HUC. In 1993, received my reform rabbinical ordination. That means that uh, I have both. I am full compatible. I am like uh, Apple and Android. I can work on the conservative mood or in the reform mood. Uh, because but for me, for me, there are not big difference between the conservative and the reform movement. I think that it's more a political decision in the leadership and not a sociological or ideological distinction on the field. There are the funny things and the maybe bad things of uh, uh, politics and institutions that don't serve the needs of the people, that use the people to serve the politician and the power and institution to fulfill uh, the ego and the position of the leaders and not to serve the needs of the people on the field. But can, what can I tell you after the last World Science Congress for me was more clear than ever what we are doing with the national institutions, what means the challenge of the Jewish politics around the world. That we need also to, to have, maybe not today that we are finishing now, but maybe to have a wider discussion. And then I come back in 1993, the end of 1993 to Argentina. In 1994, you know that we have the bombing of the AMIA, that was the Jewish headquarters. And this tragedy uh, bring me out of the synagogue and the community work to become a social referent, pursuing justice on the streets. And then uh, really I start a new way in my vocation. I really feel that uh, to be a rabbi in Argentina in this context means for me to be a social leader to the world uh, society because really I believe that uh, this is the meaning of our liberal approach that is not only to build Jewish community is to build Jewish community to have a general impact in the general society about what are our beliefs and also not to feel that we are the only one people that believe in these values <laughs> because the values are universal. We have a particular way to, to fulfill these values in virtues and practices, but it's not only that the, I don't believe in the apologetic approach of the Jewish people that we are the best, we are the only one, 
we are the champions. I think that we are really fulfilled to our beliefs, but we are part of the humankind. And the only difference is not what religions we, we have and what are our symbolic uh, system of beliefs. In the end of the day, I think that the only distinction is good people and not so good people and to work together. I really believe that. And then in this time, when I go out to, to the streets and demonstrations and became a social activist, uh, in this context, uh, I spent more than 20 years working in Argentina in the two fronts inside the community we built a network of institutions. I founded one day school, kindergarten primary, and we connect uh, more than five synagogues in Buenos Aires uh, that belongs to our network. And also I come into politics, first of all, civic politics. And uh, later in, 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 in my party. And then uh, I became in Argentina the first rabbi that takes a public office, like a congressman, and then like the Minister of Environment in the last government in Argentina. Uh, and uh, finally, I never mind that we have the opportunity to become the president of the World Union. Because I, I remember the time I was a student in Jerusalem living in the headquarters. I study at the HUC. I spend a lot of time in Beit Shmuel. I know very well our leaders in Israel. That was part of my uh, partners. We were students at the HUC and really to, to, to take over the, the leadership and the vision that uh, I, I so admire from Rabbi T. Hirsch. I was there in Israel when we started with Netzer, the first conference. And we started also with Netzer in Argentina this time. I was part of the young the youth delegation when they, the first Garin of Olim comes to install the Eben Apina, the stone with the foundation of Yael Bet that became Lotan. And uh, I remember very well that the, the first and the only one congregation in Jerusalem was RL. And I remember the first step of our uh, Moreno Berrabeinu, uh, 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 Levi Kelman. I remember when he started with Colin uh, Shama. I visit uh, Bob Samuel in Leobeck. There is like I can share with you part of the story, but for me, it's it's funny because all the people in the reform movement, especially in Israel, they believe that I come out from Argentina and that I don't know nothing about what's happened with the reform movement in, in Israel, especially. But for me now, if I want to share with you my feeling, the, 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 the first uh, trip that I am planning to, to, to have and the first mission that we are planning to, to invite is to your countries. I feel that uh, I, I need to be, to be with you on the field and to know exactly what's happened there because uh, this is part of my reform and progressive work that I only heard the good things that all the people are telling about your work, but no, nothing, not the Zoom, not the conference can change uh, the important personal meeting with the Jewish life that you are really cultivating, they are, you are keeping, you are growing. And then this is for us a, a treasure that we need to keep and to, to work together in the future. This is interesting that you are talking about this in the end because it was exactly the wish that I wanted to maybe finish our session and thank you very much for your personal story and for your vision and for Parashat Shavuar uh, comments. Uh, so the 
uh, important thing that I want to wish to all of us to meet in real life and to visit those places that uh, was connected mm -hmm. to us through the windows of Zoom yesterday because uh, uh, nothing can be like a real meeting with kids in kindergarten, with students in school, with our community members during the Kabbalah Shabbat and Shacharit services. And this is a real Jewish reform life that is uh, amazing in Forum of Soviet Union. And uh, I'm wishing all of us to continue to strengths, to develop new communities and uh, to have uh, an amazing time, not just only by Zoom's conferences, but in real life uh, too. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank it's you, a Rita. big pleasure for us. Thank you, Rita, and thank all of you for this uh, conference and also in this Shabbat, not only to, to wish you a peaceful and nice Shabbat, also to, to raise our prayers for peace and uh, Rita for your parents from Refuah Shlema. All the best. Shabbat Shalom and thank you for this period. Shabbat Shalom.